Hi, I'm Juliana. I'm here with Oscar at Elma Racing. Your next project is going to be to build a car for the Time Attack. Why did you choose the Time Attack series? Uh, well, there are lots of uh, racing series, of course, uh, around the world. And um, yeah, I mean, many good ones probably to choose from, but, but there are yeah, two important aspects that it needed to be a, a worldwide series that has a, um, really a high visibility events like World Time Attack, for instance. And uh, then the other aspect is, of course, being a company developing uh, engines and, and car components that, that the technical rules need to be very free. And that's one of the, the yeah, I mean, other really important thing that, that you can innovate, you can do new technical solutions. Not all, every car doesn't need to be exactly the same. I think that's also one of the things that maybe yeah, has increased the popularity for Time Attack a lot. But, but yeah, the technical freedom is really what, what we're mostly interested in. Okay. Can you walk us through the technical aspect of the car? Um, sure. So um, if we start from the from the front, we have the engine. Well, it's not really in the front, but but it's a, a mid front engine type layout. But we're running our our uh, own production uh, Thor engine there. It's um, for a uh, circuit racing variant of that. So 1,500 horsepower is is what we're going to be taking taking out of it. Uh, then uh, yeah, moving backwards, we have the cockpit area. That's yeah, really nothing special with that. And we're running a, a rear gearbox. Uh, it's a drag racing gearbox also because, yeah, we have 1,500 horsepower and there are no really good lightweight options available for for that for uh, circuit racing directly. So we're adapting a uh, drag racing gearbox for that and should actually be good. And we're mounting that directly to, uh, to the differential at the back of the car. We're doing some adapter pieces for that, but... Shouldn't, be, shouldn't really be too difficult. And uh, the suspension system, uh, we have a, a conventional uh, damper and uh, spring setup. They're completely independent, so we're not running uh, anti-roll bars or anything like that at all. But we are running uh, active ride height control uh, on the car. So, so we will be uh, controlling, um, especially at higher speeds when you have more downforce, then we're sort of compensating the ride height with that and, and also doing uh, active anti-roll and active anti-dive and anti-squat also but yeah um, and we're using oh, and also yeah a quite large um, thing that we're developing is the control electronics also so we're using our contr own control electronics to run the engine and the gearbox and the suspension system and of course the regular data logging and boost control and all, all of these aspects and uh, what else at the rear? Oh yeah, the aerodynamics are, are of course, um, yeah, one of the most important things things on the car. So everything is very heavily, uh, heavily sort of optimized to get the maximum amount of, of downforce available from the car. And yeah, because we're we're the simulations are, are showing high downforce amounts, then the weight is very important also. So that's why we're pushing the weight down as far as possible on the car. And I think our Thor engine is really one of the main main things that really enables that because we save so much weight on the engine and the technical solutions for that that it's possible to make a really lightweight, uh, high horsepower and, and high downforce car. Mm -hmm. Okay, could you explain a bit more why is it so important, the uh, downforce to weight ratio at a circuit racing cars? Uh, yeah, well, that that is, I mean by far the most important aspect of the whole thing. I mean, it's even more important than tires, it's more important than horsepower, it's more important than, the, than uh, what driver you have. I mean, it, it I mean, trumps every other aspect of the car by far. So when you, you hear lots of guys talking about what their power to weight ratio is or what their top speed is or anything, then they know absolutely nothing about circuit racing. Because, um, yeah, so... Um, to explain what, what actually happens and, and where you're spending your time on, on the lap time. So, so it's a yeah, ba basic physics and, and numerics really. Like you spend the time mostly at, at the slowest speeds. And especially in, in the corners, I mean in the corners is your slowest speed of course because on the straights you just go flat out all, all the time. Uh, so so um, in the corners you have to slow down to the corners and you have some minimum speed and if you increase that minimum speed then you have a higher speed exiting the corner also and a higher speed for the whole following straight. So it's, it's quite easy to, to calculate or, or even without even calculating that you know that the corner speed is everything for a lap time in, in circuit racing. 
So um, then we can look at what sort of physical aspects are there in, in cornering performance. And this, I mean, designing a circuit racing car really boils down into this like one aspect. So you have a centrifugal force in the corners and that's uh, basically the velocity squared uh, times the mass of the vehicle. And you, of course, you have a fixed mass vehicle that you're driving around the corner, then you push the velocity up as high as possible. And then you have a certain centrifugal force that the tires need to be able to, to uh, counteract to, to keep you in the corner. So you can increase the tire traction or, or reduce your mass. But the tire traction again is dependent on, on how much force you press the tire down against the asphalt with. So the higher the weight of the car, the more downward force you have, but then you can also have downforce, aerodynamic force pushing down on the wheels. And so if you increase the mass of the car, you have a, a higher downward force pushing down on the tire, but you also have a higher centrifugal force, so you can't go any faster through the corner. But if you increase the downforce, then you're not increasing the, the centrifugal force. So that means you can compensate for that by increasing your velocity. And this is really, I mean, the whole thing. So you increase your downforce and reduce your mass, then you have more traction and less uh, centrifugal force countering that. So then you can go much, much faster through the corners. And that also helps with downforce because the faster you go, the more downforce you have. And that really, really helps out with everything. And yeah, it's, I mean, of course, of course, the best teams know this, and you look at the RP968 team and the MCA and and um, yeah, these really top time attack teams. I mean, they know what, what it's all about, and they design their cars for this, and that's the most important. They don't care about what the top speed is or what their power to weight ratio is because that's not as important. But yeah, you see a lot of teams wasting lots of money doing. Uh, high horsepower or high weight cars that really don't have the downforce level and you can spend that that design effort and money so much more efficiently on on other aspects so yeah that's one of the things also we're trying to push it it's not that difficult to figure out what what is very important and so we want to to really push what what is important and i understand uh, that you will actually be driving this car how big of a challenge is this for you um it's going to be quite a challenge the driving aspect there are of course other challenges also with with the project um the time schedule specifically but but i mean we are running this as sort of a business decision that's usually business decisions are very bad if they <laughs> involve actually going racing but but i mean yeah what better way to to uh, market a lightweight high horsepower racing engine than actually showing what 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 kind of a car you can build with with our thor engine so that's one of one of the really main aspects uh, aspects for that and and uh, yeah really big challenge to make that work and get it done in the time schedule we're looking at but the driving aspect is of course also a, a huge 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 um yeah potential problem um it is i wouldn't say it's going to be very difficult i do have a lot a lot of racing experience but not in sort of the most recent years um but I have zero experience with high downforce cars. Then again, because all of the technical aspects of the car are so different than what's available, like with the with the active ride height control system, and with the kind of uh, engine power management we're using, and gearbox control, and getting the whole package to work together with the IRO system, and and these aspects. So it's uh, um, yeah, you basically have to have someone that is very very. Um, well knowledgeable about the technical aspects to actually test the car to be able to adjust everything and get it to work but the simulations um, do show that that I mean the handling should be very very good because and quite easy to get the handling also good because uh, the, act, the active ride height control system allows us to run a very soft suspension for instance and that really helps out a lot with with uh, the handling aspects and you don't have these vibration and oscillation and, and bounciness problems that you typically have with high downforce lightweight cars but um, yeah, the cornering speeds on some of the corners on the racetracks are very scary and <laughs> we'll have to see. I mean, the handling looks seems good, so it shouldn't be a big issue, but we, we are looking into some safety aspects. We might be running a, a brake parachute even from a drag racing stuff also that, that um, yeah, as a sort of added safety bonus that if you spin the car around or something and lose the downforce, so you don't have any braking capability anymore, so you have a brake chute for, for those kind of things. But we're looking into sort of um, in the simulations a little bit more like like how 
how big of a chance is that that is going to happen and how big of a task would it be to in include a brake chute and these types of things but there are some scary aspects with the car so <laughs> so we are looking into this this quite a lot but but yeah i mean the aerodynamic stability and the stability of the car are very important and their reactions to the driver inputs and these types of things if, if you don't look into these types of things when you're designing a car of this sort of speed then then it will be incredibly dangerous but when you look at, into these things and you have some reasonable expectations then then i i think it, it should be okay okay and how can the viewers follow the project um well we try to stay active on social media not not probably as active as we should be but uh, we we update stuff on instagram on facebook on Twitter, of course, also, and uh, maybe these more in-depth stuff is probably on our, our YouTube channel, so follow us there. And uh, yeah, of course, on our website also, elmerracing.com, I find all the links to our social media stuff from there, so that's good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks.